Good morning and God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. It's Thursday, so it's got to be thrilling. I pray God's blessing upon you today. I pray that all is well. I pray that God is providing for all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And I pray that the Lord will just bless you in a wonderful and a marvelous way. I'm going to be talking in the next couple of sessions about the power of the family altar. Now, the doors have been closed. We've been locked up. We've been with our families. And I think it's a good time to initiate some things that needs to be done in the family. They tell me if you do something for 14 days in a row, you create a good habit. Hello, Jesus. And so I want to share with you the importance of the power of the family altar. When I was growing up as a boy, we would get up in the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, get out there. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Andrea. And uh, we would be milking the cows. Hi, Vanny. And we'd be milking the cows at 6 o'clock in the morning. We'd be all done with our chores. And we'd be in the house at about 7.30 in the morning. My mother would have breakfast waiting for us. But before we had breakfast, she opened up the Word of God. And we had a time of prayer. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. And I'm telling you, we need to get back to the family altars in this nation and around the world as Christian people. I also know that sometimes families are going here, there, you know, it's, they're scattered. I believe it's the plan of the devil. And so you, I know that you're going to have to work extra hard to have that time of family devotions with your family. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. And I believe that in these days that we're living in, where, you know, everybody's behind closed doors, so to speak, God is resetting the family. He's resetting your life. They tell me that if you do something 14 days in a row, you've created a habit. So I want to encourage you today to create a habit of having family devotions. The husband is the one that's to initiate this, but if he doesn't do it, then the wife does it. And uh, so I want to talk about that today, and I want to encourage you to do that. Let's go to the Word of God, and there's many scriptures that I've got here. I won't take time to read them all, but I will read in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give... Uh, this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. One of the things that Abraham did that wherever he went, he was always building an altar. Regardless where you're at, you need to build a family altar. Now, this is the longest time that I've been home in 20 years. You say, well, how do you have family time with your wife? I phone her up. I have a date with her every morning at a certain time where over the telephone, my wife and I pray and read the scriptures. We're in the book of Jeremiah now. She reads a chapter and then I pray. We have a prayer list. And then the next day, it's vice versa. Where did that come about? Where did the strong devotional life come into my life? It came because of my mother. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, I didn't like it sometimes, you know, because my mother would pray for, for everybody. She would pray for the missionaries, and she would just keep praying and praying. And I said, oh, my God, when's this woman going to stop, you know? And as a teenager, I didn't appreciate it. I, I endured it. I did it because I had no choice. But, hey, it was a part of growing up in the Hofer home. And then my, my dad would pray in German uh, over the food and, and would pray. And so I, I, I grew up in a home that had family devotions. So very, very important. Now, the altar is a place of intimacy and communion with God. 
Here is my pet peeve. Not enough, you know, when I started out in this thing 53 years ago, every church, every church had altars. They had altars. I mean, and I would, when I was an evangelist, I would go into that church and I would look at the altars and to see if there were any tear stains on that altar. First place I went. And if there were no tear stains on that altar, as I looked at it, I knew that I had my work cut out for me that time that I'm with them in that service preaching revival meetings. For some reason, they have taken away the altars in our churches. And for some reason, the, the, the pastors are not giving time for the people after he gets done preaching to come around the altars of God. When I was a new Christian 53 years ago in the assemblies of God on Sunday nights, we would have meetings and the preacher would preach and then he would open it up and have the people come down to the altars to pray. I, I grew up in a Mennonite home where my mom uh, emphasized family altars. And then when I went into the assemblies of God, it was so precious and beautiful. But I think you can count on your big toe how many churches have those altars. And you say, well, Brother Hofer, you're old-fashioned. Yep, I'm old-fashioned when it comes to that. Now, let's get back to my notes before I get into trouble. All right? When a, fam <laughs> when a family builds an altar for God, God blesses them just like he blessed Abraham. Now, if you want the family, if you want your family blessed of God, begin to build an altar just like Abraham did. And so if we don't build an altar, God doesn't bless us. He can't bless us. He doesn't know where you're at, so to speak. So Abraham built the altar of God because of that. He had an intimate relationship with God and God blessed everything that he touched. So when we have this, and I, I, I encourage you to have the, the altar time in the morning if you can, okay? And I know everybody's got different schedules, but that should be our goal. You might have to get up a little earlier, maybe 10 minutes earlier or 15 minutes earlier to have that devotion with your, with your, uh, with your family. And husbands and wives, you need to have that devotional time between the two of you and then have devotions with your uh, children as well. And so for many Christian families, spirituality is meant uh, for the church, that we, we just pray in church, we just read the Bible in church, and that we, uh, we send our kids to Sunday school, and it's the Sunday school uh, teacher, that's her responsibility. No, it's a part of it, but it is not the total picture. This is where we must have that Bible study at home and prayer in, in the home and then also when we send our kids to Sunday school or to daily vacation Bible school, that's just a plus. That's just an extra. Amen. Uh, and that reaffirms what you're doing. So we don't want to stop doing that. And so you've had time now. You're locked up in the house, you know, and I, what, what, after this thing is over, what have you learned? I told my wife today, I said, if we don't learn what God wants us to learn in this time out that he's given to us, then we're going to have to take the lesson again some other time. Ufa, you know? So I want to learn my lesson during this season. And I, I, I want to come out of this season uh, in my life with saying, look, you know what? When this virus came, yes, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. But I learned something out of it. And God... Um, I learned something and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a better person now uh, than when I first started this thing. So it is only through the family altar that spiritual exercises like prayer, you know, and like teaching and like praise and worship can be introduced into our homes. And uh, when we do that, God's name will be glorified. Now, let me talk about some benefits, some benefits of, of uh, family time. And, you know, I'll go on here so I don't forget. So fellowship, it makes the family come together 
to pray, to study the word of God and worship. Okay. You're actually to have church in your house. What would happen if every, every home in America would read the Bible and pray and worship daily? Oh my God. Woo -woo. Glory. So as a result of the family altar, children are brought up in the fear of God. Yes. They are blessed by the Lord and in turn become a blessing to their family. It is the family altar that the children develop godly virtues and values to life and to bring stability to their life and to have a peaceful, victorious life in the future. Write it down, Proverbs 22, 6. When even though I slipped away from the Lord for a season, there were some things that I would not get involved in. Because I knew that that was wrong, really wrong. I did not even get involved with that because I was taught right from wrong through the teaching in my house in a Christian home. God was developing me. So a lot of people don't have any convictions because they've not been taught the word of God. So when you're taught the word of God, even as a youngster, it brings conviction. Now, children will also learn how to communicate with God at the family altar. So you are actually training the children how to pray. You're training the children how to read the word of God and how to communicate with God. So very important. I believe with all of my heart, the reason that I'm still serving God today is because I have read my Bible 99% of the time every day. I pray every day and because I was brought up that way. So mommy and daddy, you are training your child, not for that day, but for the future, for the future. At the prayer altar, battles of life are won as we fight them together. I'll never forget, many years ago, uh, my wife loves Christmas. She is a Christmas fanatic. Uh, I often joke that we have so many lights at our house at Christmas time that when Walmart runs out, they call Ramona, okay? So she loves Christmas. She loves to give gifts. I've seen this woman uh, give gifts to the rest of the family, and she only end up with one. And I would fight with her, you know, and she, no, 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 that's, family comes first. It's okay. One, one time we had a family meeting, and we brought the two younger girls, Michelle and Beth. We brought them into the living room, and while we were living in Alabama, we, uh, the resources was, was like zero, and she said to the kids, she said, this year, mom is not going to be able to give you much of a Christmas. And that was at our devotional time. And she said, but this Christmas, we're going to write notes to each other. And we're going to just tell each other how much we love each other and appreciate each other. And we got an old straggly Christmas tree and uh, and, uh, and we put those notes underneath the tree, but you know something, God did a miracle for us that mm -hmm. Christmas Eve at three o'clock in the afternoon, the special delivery came and it was a check from a lady for $1,500. I'm telling you, my kids were jumping up and down and praising God. Ramona went out and did some last minute Christmas shopping and God honored that. But we had a family meeting. I'll tell you something else that happened. One time back in South Dakota, we were about to lose the farm. And so we, mom and dad and my sister Marlette and myself, we went, mom and dad called mm -hmm. the meeting and said, dad is going to have to go to work at the armor uh, company and the, where they butchered uh, pigs. And we have to do this because we have to get this money to pay the loan at the bank. And so my, my dad said to me, you're going to have to get up in the morning and help mom to do all the chores because I'll be already gone. Daddy left at five o'clock in the morning. And then 
Daddy turned to my sister Marlette and said to her, you're in charge of all the cooking. You're in charge of keeping the house because mother is going to be busy working on the farm while I'm working there. Man, some of my best talks when my mother and I were working on the farm, she, 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 she poured into me life. I had questions that I asked her. And while we were out there working on the farm, I asked her questions and she would answer them. We became a family. So when you're going through a crisis, when you're going through a tough time financially or whatever, bring the family together. Bring the family together and say, hey, this is what's going on. We're all going to have to pull together. And I'm telling you, we made it through that and we didn't lose the farm. I'm sorry. We didn't lose the farm because when it was tough, we came together as a family. But we came together before mm -hmm. that. We came together as we would worship the Lord and as we would praise the Lord and as we would read the word of God. That was the cement that held us together during the difficult times is when my mom and dad, before we would eat breakfast, and I remember my dad, I can't repeat it now because it's been so long ago, he would pray in, in, uh, in German and he would pray in German over the food and, and over the day. And sometimes my dad at night would, would uh, go beside his bed and kneel down and pray. And I would, as a little boy, boy, this is terrible. Not really terrible. This is really, anyway, I, I just want to, the Holy Spirit is trying to talk to us this morning. And when my dad would kneel down and pray, I would kneel down and snuggle up. And, and pray with him. Oh, I'm telling you, Daddy, come on now. Come on, Mommy. Let's do this. Let's get on this in Jesus' name. We need each other in the family. So the power of God releases the benefits of, of the family. The prayer altar makes the family to spend good time together with God. Now, let me say, don't make devotions. Well, it's time to have devotions now. Get over. No, no. Hey, come on, kids. We're going to have a short time don't make it you know seven hours and 15 minutes you know you know if, if you if you would get together at first 10 minutes a day with your family oof -a. I mean and then they're enjoying it make it happy make it a wonderful time and uh, include the children and let them pray and then as the the uh, as the uh, if you have teenagers say okay Tuesday is your day for devotions uh, we're, you're gonna do devotions and you'll be surprised with those kids. I heard there's a little boy in, in Brawley, California. This kid can pray. He's only eight years old, but he prays underneath the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. God is using our children. So the family altar is also a place of repentance. Maybe as a dad, maybe you got angry or maybe you got upset at your wife or you need to mm -hmm. repent in front of your kids and say hey dad was wrong please forgive me or maybe as a mother you might have to say to your husband and to your children mom was wrong or maybe as a teenager you have a an, an attitude you say you know what i want to apologize to the family please forgive me i i should have never done that that's that's so beautiful. It creates an atmosphere of miracles and signs and wonders for the family. And that's what happened when we on the Christmas story that I just got done telling you. So the family altar fosters unity, harmony, and a love for family. Oh, have a regular time uh, each day. Uh, set, set aside that time and say, at, at this time, we're going to have uh, family time in prayer. And, and kids, I hope you're listening to me today. Would you cooperate with mom and dad? Don't have an attitude about this, okay? Don't have an attitude. You know, I had a little attitude, but my dad was so big. <laughs> I would have went to heaven early. <laughs> and I, I protested about it. But, you know, you know, we're sort of weird sometimes when we're teenagers. So don't give your mom and dad a hard time about, about it, okay? Uh, make the Bibles available for the family. 
uh, and make it in the easier, you know, if it's, um, if you have a, a, a Bible that's made a little bit easier for your children to understand, why, why go for it and uh, take the scriptures for praise and for worship and uh, reading that word of God and mm -hmm. let the family mm -hmm. uh, members participate uh, and it, it, it will just be wonderful. And so, and, and don't give up the fight. I mean, you know, I know I, I've been in homes where the, where the mom and the dad, like, we're going to have devotions now. And, and sometimes there's mm -hmm. somebody in the family that they just begin to bellyache about it. And, and you know, I, I'd like to, you know, I just a visitor there, but I'd like to reach out. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and take it from this old man with the gray hair. Okay. Fight for that time of devotions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and say, we're going to do this in the name of the Lord. We're going to have this devotional time. And I want to encourage you to do that today. And I want, I want your kids, to, to, just ask them to listen to me. Uh, tell them, sit down and say, Bro Brother Gordon's got something to share with us. And we want everybody just to listen to Gordon. And just for a little bit. And how important it is. And I've been in your homes and I, I love your children. And the greatest thing that we can give for our kids is the, the basics of the Word of God. We only have them for about 18 years, you know, and then that's it. And so we have to lay that platform. So don't give up, Mom. Don't give up, Dad. Have that devotions with your children. Have that family devotions. Because I believe if American families will pray, we can change a nation we can change a nation. Let me pray for you today. Father, this has been such a special time for me. I guess the older you get, the more you appreciate your mom and your dad. My dad taught me so many wonderful things about work, about work ethics. When we would be selling grain, he'd always say, put in an extra shovel, make sure the man gets more than what he paid for. When we would sell livestock, my dad would say, there's one that limps. You don't have to buy that one. And if you want to buy it, I'll, I'll discount it to you. But I don't want to sell you something that's not right. That's the way I grew up. I grew up when somebody came to our house, you know, sit down, have some coffee, have some, have some, stay for lunch, you know. That's how I grew up. And sometimes... We as parents think we're not doing anything, but we're doing a lot by our example. So I want to encourage every mom, every dad out there to continue to teach your kids about the love of God and the goodness of God and for you to be that example. Amen. I bless you today in Jesus' name. The Spanish version is coming up later. I don't know if I can do this twi <laughs> twice in a row or not. But I love you, and Jesus loves you. Please share this with people. I believe it's a God word for this time. God bless you.